Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with yet another box, this time of some pretty extraordinary historical recordings. It is <clears throat> The Origins of the Quartetto Italiano, and this has a title subtitled Prima la Musica, which means, of course, first the music. It's part of like that phrase, Prima la Musica dopo le parole, which was first the music, then the words. That wonderful conflict between words and music that has permeated the world of opera and other things. What is more important, words or music? Well, obviously, if you're a string quartet, music is more important, and it certainly was for the Quartetto Italiano. These are recordings that date from, which is the complete Warner recordings, from like 1940-something, they say, to 19-something-something. Let me find out what the dates are. I had it here, and I don't know where they went, but let's see. Wait a minute. Let me put this down, and we're just going to take this one disc at a time. There are 14 discs in this particular set, and they are really, really rather extraordinary, I have to say. Let's uh, see what this says here in the notes. Uh, the contribution of 1946. 1946. Holy cow. Until, on the last disc here, I never know when you open one of these boxes whether they're going to tell you whether where you know where the contents are. Are they in the booklet but not on the discs? Are they on the discs but not on the, the booklet? It's really kind of like, well, irritating. Okay, 1959. So we go from from, you know, a, roughly a 10-year period, or 10 years more, 13 years, from 46 to 59. Now, as you know, the, the Quartetto Italiano was one of the all-time great quartets in the history of Western civilization, and they were known, to describe them, they were sort of the apotheosis of the cultivated, aristocratic, European quartet style. Um, if you know what that is, or if you know what I mean, they are kind of they were kind of like the the Claudio Aral of string quartets. That is, everything they did was sober, serious, impeccably tasteful, gorgeous in terms of sonority, highly cultivated sound, and just 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 wonderful, wonderful group. I, I, I love them, and of course later they they jumped ship and moved to Phillips where they made quite the discography, a very large discography, including magnificent Beethoven complete quartets and Mozart quartets and all kinds of other things like that. And really, really one of the one of the all time great groups. But these earlier recordings are interesting. And they're interesting because they really do show you how they form their style. And in doing that, I, I have to say, listening to these has been so interesting. You know, some of them were issued, I think, on Testament for a bit. But um, essentially, a lot of this stuff is new to CD, and it is marvelous, and it is recognizably the Quartetto Italiano that we know and love. But what's so interesting about it is hearing, hearing how that, that kind of approach to music making took shape. And you can tell very clearly, if you play in here, there are two separate recordings of the Debussy Quartet. One of them... Let's see, here comes the first thing they ever did. It comes from 1946. And the next one, wait a minute, here's the other one, uh, comes from 1954. So you've got, you've got a good eight years between them. The 1946 recording is extremely quick, very swift, beautifully played. But, but, you know, like a lot of recordings from the interwar period or right, right around World War II and before, Tempe teams tend to be very zippy. But then in 1954, everything has changed. Everything is more measured, more deliberate, more carefully phrased. I don't think it's any less beautiful, and it's certainly no less legitimate, but it's a completely different interpretive approach. And it is the Quartetto Italiano as we later knew them. Fascinating, fascinating to make that comparison. You can do it. You can do it just by comparing the scherzos of the quartets or listen to, of course, to all of them eventually. But it's, it's a wonderful way to, to hear the difference in style when once they got settled and started to, to make, you know, understand what their approach to music was going to be. But in the meantime, let's just go through this one disc at a time because 
I mean, this is just a historical set. I'm not going to tell you whether they're good or bad or indifferent. You want these. If you collect really important historical recordings of chamber music, you want these because they were one of those, those iconic groups and you have to hear what they did. So let's see what they did. First, it was the DBC Quartet. And then Leonardo Vinci, the 12 soli per violino a, a, a arpicordio. I guess that's a harpsichordio, an arpicordio. And then there was two Boccherini quartets, Opus 39, number eight, and Opus 58, number two. And I have to say, one of the, the lovely things about these early recordings of the Italiano is their dedication to the Italian chamber music, Baroque and classical string quartet tradition, because nobody else did it or was doing it. There was, you know, the Boccherini Quartet, you know, some of those earlier groups. But basically, um, it's a shame that at this period in the 40s and 50s and 60s, the, the German notion of inherent Teutonic superiority in the world of chamber music was so, so um, uniformly accepted. It's just a shame to me because because there is so much fabulous chamber music. I mean, Boccherini is one of the all-time great chamber music composers. His quartets are fantastic, and his other chamber works, they're beautiful, beautiful works. And it, nobody really exploited them. And the Quartetto Italiano gives us a taste of this repertoire, and it only leaves us wanting more. And it still remains to be exploited. And for me, it's a terrible shame that it hasn't been exploited by the great standard groups playing in modern style rather than period instrument groups, which play in horrible style as often as not. Because the music is just lovely and it sounds even better when played in the wonderful modern style, which I believe is more authentic than the period style. But that's me. Anyway, there it was. Debussy, totally fabulous, and Boccherini, a wonderful introduction to the Quartetto Italiano. Next, two Mozart Street Quartets. Uh, number 14 and number 15, yes, in G major and D minor. These are the, you know, dedicated to Haydn quartets. Kershaw 387 and Kershaw 421. And their Mozart was always just exquisitely beautiful. It really is. It's wonderful. Since then, there's been Mozart that's kind of leaner and meaner. But wow, could they play Mozart. It's just wonderful. And then we have Beethoven's 13th string quartet. Oh, yeah. Opus 130, an all big, juicy, 39 fun-filled minutes of it. I should love this piece. Of course, we all do, don't we? And it's terrific. It's just terrific. The cavatina is just, you know, so it's so cavat. It's so singing and lovely. It's marvelous and warm and juicy. Then we get to DBC again, and the Darius Mio, String Quartet number 12, some of their their uh, homage to the more contemporary quartet literature. And that's great to have, of course. There are not so many recordings of the Mio quartets that are of that level. Then the Brahms Third String Quartet. Um, this is CD5. These are not terribly well-filled CDs, I must say, but that's okay. It's 37 minutes and 46 seconds of Juicy Brahms. And then let's see, we have, like I said, I'm not getting into so much the the good, bad, or indifferent, because it doesn't matter. I mean, these are important recordings that we're all going to want. So I'm not, I'm not going to try and, and and make issues about interpretation. Um, we may deal with certain individual pieces, you know, and then we can talk about them in more detail. But for the purpose of this box, this has two Haydn quartets, except they're not. One is the Serenade Quartet by Hofstadter. That lovely, lovely piece that used to be thought by Haydn, thought to be by Haydn. And if you believe in my theory of how to streamline the classics, I recommend the video, then we might as well assume it is by Haydn and say to hell with Roman Hofstadter. And then the, the Opus 76, number two in D minor, the fifths. That's the one with the witch's minuet. You know, do 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 Yeah, it's great. The witch, the witch, yes. Prokofiev quartet, string quartet number two. This was 1955. So these are relatively recent. And then Malapiero string quartet number four. Isn't that nice to have? A little bit more of an homage to the Italian string tradition. 
which, like I said, really remains unexplored even to this day and has enormous, enormously rewarding potential for those of us who uh, are into that sort of stuff, and I certainly am. Haydn, the Bird Quartet, yay, Opus 33, number three, and The Sunrise, Opus 76, number four. Okay, I talk a little bit about performances. These are beautiful performances. They're so, so shapely, so intelligent, so well-balanced, so beautifully judged in terms of tempo. And the bird is so adorable. It just twitters along. It's, it's, it's delightful. And then we have, let's see, Mozart again. We have The Hunt. The Hunt is quartet number 17. And Schubert, this is billed as string quartet number two. Deutsch 32, early, early Schubert. How lovely to hear some of that around. You know, really, when was the last time you heard Deutsch 32? Hmm? Great. Let's see, Beethoven, quartet number 10, the harp. And that's, you know, their Beethoven, the, the Italianus Beethoven really developed into some of the all-time great Beethoven quartet playing. And I particularly loved their middle quartets, the Razumovskis and the harp. And this is right up there with them. I mean, oh, it's just, it's just wonderfully beautiful, amazingly beautiful. Even the way they play pizzicato, you know, it just had that, that lovely resonance. It never sounds just brittle. It, it, the tone always has body, even in pizzicato. I mean, that's saying something, right? I think it is anyway. And here we have, oh, this one's really fun, CD 11. You get Baldassare Galupi. Galupi's Concerto a Quattro, number one in G minor. These are string quartets, effectively. And this is fun music, fun to listen to. Then Boccherini's string quartet, La Tirana, which is Opus 44, number four. And then Cambini. Now, Cambini wrote a ton of string quartets, and he was a very, very fine quartet composer. And this is his string quartet in G minor. It isn't otherwise marked, but his dates were 1746 to 1825. I've seen a lot of his scores and, and seen a lot of his music, but I haven't heard all that much of it. And I really, really enjoyed having this sample. It's a three-movement work, Allegro Affettuoso, Adagio, and Presto, but quite substantial, about 20 minutes long. It's, it's, it's serious, serious classical period quartet writing and very much worth, worth getting to know. Uh, then we have, ah, uh, let's see, Gabrielli, Due canzone per a quattro, four-part canzones, and then Biagio Marini. This is early, early Renaissance, quasi-proto-early Baroque Italian music. The Balletto Primo a Tre, and Massimiliano Neri, the Sonata Quinta a Quattro, his fifth sonata in four parts, and Giovanni Vitali, the Capriccio in F major, and Alessandro Scarlatti, Sonata a Quattro number four in D minor, and then Vivaldi, the, the Sonata a Quattro al Santo Sepulcro from the Holy Sepulchre, a wonderful disc of early music, beautifully played in that kind of, with, you know, when the performance is tasteful, when the performance is musical, questions of period style just don't matter. They really don't because you enjoy the music and it speaks to us. And if we enjoy the music and it speaks to us, you can't really ask for much more than that, can you? And then we get, let's see, oh, the Schumann Quartet in A major, Opus 41, number three, and Stravinsky's Three Pieces for String Quartets. Quartet, interesting coupling, isn't it, indeedy? And those are fun to have too. Definitely. Then we get the Ravel Quartet, which you got to have. I mean, this was, this was, you know, Quartetto Italiano meat and potatoes repertoire. I mean, their Debussy and Ravel and Phillips is one of my reference recordings in those works. And then the early Mozart String Quartet number three, Kerschel 156. I like the way that they explore early Mozart, early Schubert, early, early, early music, everybody's early music. That's really nice. Early classical, early Baroque, early. It's good to be early. It's never good to be late. Well, you know, musically. Okay. Then we get quartet number one by DBC. No, no, CD one. That's it. That's the 14 discs. And I have to say, I mean, listening to these, which I've been doing for the past two weeks, has been an unalloyed joy. Absolutely fabulous. I am so glad that Warner issued this. I mean, you know, to be honest with you, I mean, I knew they did some stuff for Warner. 
but the Phillips box is so comprehensive. I really didn't have any sense of just how much there was in the pre-Phillips Quartetto Italiano era because it just hasn't been available. So now it is available. Here it is. And if you are, like I said, a chamber music or string quartet fancier, you are going to want this. The remasterings are all very good. The sonics are all perfectly listenable, even from 1946. There's no problem. I mean, thank God with chamber music, you don't usually have the issues of, you know, dynamic compression and other things that you have with orchestral music or choral music, you know, operatic music. So this is just a pleasure from beginning to end, and I can't recommend it more strongly. You need this if you are serious about your chamber music collection and your string quartets particularly. So keep on listening, folks. Thanks for joining me. Take care.